Hi, this is a dissection for Bio 185 Zoology here at Golden West College. This is a frog. This is a male frog, and we'll go over the external anatomy first. The specific genus and species of this is Rana caspiana, uh, commonly known as the bullfrog. And it's a male. You can tell that superficially by the size of the tympanum. Here we have the eye, and here we have the tympanum. If the tympanum is bigger than the eye, odds are you've got a male. Now we've got him flipped over back like this. Let's take a look at a couple of muscles. Uh, not well defined on this particular specimen is Lestusmus dorsi. It should be found right in here. You can kind of see a feel of it right there. Here we have the external obliques on the side. And then here we have the gastrocnemius. Here is the um, triceps femoris. And then we'll flip him over. And we'll see his little froggy six pack. This is the rectus abdominis right down the middle that's been cut in half. Here we have the gastrocnemius again. Here's that triceps femoris again. And then here we have a muscle. It hasn't been well detected, but you can kind of see the fibers right here. That's the sartorius, and then th on the back side of the leg is the gracilis major. Uh, another muscle we have associated with the frog that we were looking at on these specimens is the triceps brachii, and that is on the back of the humerus shown right here. Looking at internal anatomy, you open it up real quick, and one of the first things you see are all these noodles. And these noodles are fat bodies, energy storage, of course, for the frog. Usually associated with these fat bodies, we find reproductive organs, and that's the case. Here's the testis. This is a male frog, so the testis is going to be small and hidden very deep into the in the body of the frog. This shiny surface on the inside uh, is there because not only because it's wet, because there's also a membrane there. That membrane is called the peritoneum, specifically the parietal peritoneum. Another large structure that we see is the liver, and it's taken some of that blue latex been injected to the specimen, so it's most of it's gone, much of it's gone to the liver. And here we have three different lobes of the liver. Associated with the liver, we have a, a storage organ called the gallbladder, and other structures we have include the stomach. And at the end of the stomach, you can see a little pinch right here. See how it goes in just right there? That little pinch is representative of the pyloric valve. Then the stomach leads to the uh, duodenum, the first segment of the intestine. And then if we go further, we see the rest of the small intestine being held in place um, by a very thorough mesentery. Looking further on, there's large intestine right here, and we also have a urinary bladder, a little sac on the back side here. Other structures we have, we have the uh, the kidney right here, it's a little misshapen, and we have the posterior vena cava, and then we have the ventral abdominal vein. Other structures here include, flipping that forward, we have the dorsal aorta and the uh, urogenital arteries. And then if we follow the dorsal, a dorsal aorta posteriorly, and I've hooked one of them right here, it branches into two pieces. You can see a left and a right piece here, and these are the common iliac arteries. Another artery we've studied on the frog is the femoral artery, and it supplies some of the leg muscles with that vital oxygen they need to do what they need to do to get the frog out of trouble. We'll continue this dissection with the female. All right, here's the female frog. One of the most obvious structures that we see on this frog, we see on this frog are the oviducts, lots and lots of oviducts. That's where the eggs mature and receive their nutrients. And then these uh, salt and pepper structures here are the ovaries. And if you take a look, usually you can isolate, there's one, a single frog egg. So each one of these little specks is a frog egg. On this particular specimen, the, um, the mouth has been dissected out properly. On the other one, it was not. So here we have the tongue. And then following back into the back area here, there's a slit. Try not to make a new one. I haven't found it yet. There it is. There's a slit right there, and that is the glottis. That's the opening to the trachea. This area in the back of the throat is known as the pharynx, and if you kind of pull this down, you can see that's the esophagus down in there. Here we have the internal narrows, one, two, and the external narrows, so these holes will lead to the inside of the frog. Just for comparison, we'll take a look at the tympanum, and it's, it's about the same size as the eye. When compared to that of the male, it's much smaller. A uh, muscle that we missed before, we'll go ahead and get it here. Here's the pectoralis, and it comes across like this, and there's also uh, a, a longitudinal section to it, but of course that's been removed as this frog has been dissected, so that piece is indeed missing. All right, other structures that we missed. 
I don't see it. I don't see a good section of the deltoid on that one. We also missed the deltoid, um, but it's not being shown on that one properly. Let's see if we can see it here. It's not been done. This one is not dissected properly either. Uh, the opening, the posterior opening of the digestive tract, the, the terminus of the digestive tract, as it were, is the cloaca. And we'll go back over to the female because it's easier to find. That's a common opening, common opening to the reproductive, excretory, and digestive tracts, and that's the cloaca.